what's up YouTube angel or fishing back at you guys with another video so this video is something different we're not gonna be bass fishing but we are gonna be talking about bass fishing more specifically we're gonna be talking about a rig that I have been using for about three years now so much confidence in nine times out of ten I'm guaranteed that I'm gonna catch a bass on it and that's called the Jika rig now for some of us we don't know what the Jika rig is nor do we know how to fish it we don't know what it looks like or we just don't know how to make it at home. So this video is gonna be covering the basics, a little bit into detail about this rig and how to make it and customize it to fit your fishing needs, no matter what body of water that you're fishing in. So with that being said, guys, let me show you what the rig does look like. That, that's a rig. So basically it looks like an EWG arm hook with a drop shot weight. So we're gonna be showing you guys how to fish it how to make this rig and underwater footage to show you guys how this rig really works and hopefully add it to your arsenal and help you guys land more bass, whether that being on the kayak, on the boat, or even for shore. It's a great rig to use all around. It's a great rig to use all year round as well. So we're gonna go to this bait shop called Lee's Bait and Tackle, located off of Army Trail Road in Carroll Stream, Illinois. They sell the rigs and components that we need to make this rig at home and if you guys don't have a least bait tackle around you guys no worries i'm going to show you another way to make this rig at home without having the fancy components to make this rig so with that being said guys i hope you guys like this video i hope you find it interesting i hope you find it educational as well because i'm showing you guys a rig that i use to catch winter time bass I know this time of year is really tough for guys to catch bass and I'm going to be sharing with you guys this rig because I truly believe this rig is super effective for anybody that wants to get into bass fishing and it's a great rig to use in general. If you can be fishing a tournament or you're just fishing for fun, this is a great rig that I highly recommend you guys go out there and try out yourself. But um, let's go through this video, let's show you how to make this rig so you guys can get a better understanding, so you guys can go out there in the water and try it and hopefully become a better angler. All right guys, we just got back from Lee's Bay and Tackle. Now we're in my office, so get used to seeing this for future videos, you know, this is gonna be my office. This is where I do all my editing. This is where I basically, if I ever make another how-to video or, or explanation or some sort of that, it'll be with this. This is my office. We got the bluegill. Don't have a name for him actually, so if you guys do have a name for him, let me know in the comment section below. Anyways guys, so we got back from the bait shop and these are what we picked up. I did show you guys what I bought at the shop to make this Jika rig. So here are the three things. So first and foremost, we need these thick weights from Decoy. This is five grams. I like the five grams a lot. They're really versatile. So if you convert five grams to ounces, that's basically three sixteenth ounces. I love using this weight. Now for the hook, um, typically I like to go with a size one aught to two aught. Here I got one aughts that I picked up at the shop guys. Decoy makes really sharp hooks, so be sure to pick some up yourself because they're really sharp. If not, if you don't have any decoys around you, use some gamagatsus. You can never go wrong with gamagatsu. And now we got some open swivels from decoy again. These are medium. I go with mediums, large or a little too big, but if you're using a bigger hook and you're doing something with a bigger weight and you're using it for maybe flipping or pitching of that sense, then I'd get the large. So with that being said, those are the three components we need to make the Jika rig. All right, guys, so now we're at my desk. Put a piece of white paper because my desk is black. It's kind of hard to see. The white's gonna make rig components stick out more and easier for you guys to see. So anyways, let's get right to it. First and foremost, you wanna open up a packet of your weights. So like I said, guys, you can use any weights you want as you guys saw from the video from the shop. 
There's a variety of different weights. I find the 3 16 ounce or the 5 grams very effective for around weedy areas or rocky areas. It's also a great weight for around, you know, if you're fishing at max, maybe around 7 feet or even deeper. You know, it all depends on your uh, comfort and comfortability. Me, I like the 5 grams. That's really great for me. That's exactly what I'm looking for, whether I'm fishing around weed, any rocky areas, even in creeks and rivers. I don't get that snagged up with the 5 grams versus if you go a heavier weight, then you have a higher chance of getting hung up on a rock or something like that. Anyways, guys, there's that. Got your hooks. I like the one ounce. One ounce fit majority of the plastics that I'm using. Pick out one of these. And our open swivel. Now, I did forget to mention, guys, that we do need one other component, but it should be easy to find, guys. Pretty sure everybody has one of these at home. A little bit of super glue, crazy glue. You know, just need crazy glue, not super glue. Or super glue, crazy glue, some kind of adhesive, really. So now we have our three components right here, guys. We got our crazy glue right here. So what we're gonna do, we need some splittering pliers. First step, we're gonna grab our open swivel. You see, this is where you're gonna tie your line, where my left hand is. On the right, it's open end. First thing I like to do, we're gonna slip on that weight onto that open swivel, like so. There you go. You got your weight on. Next step, you're gonna grab your hook. You can use any hook size you want. I'm using a one knot because that's something I like. The one out with the five gram weight is the ideal setup for me. Everybody has their own different taste. You guys choose how you want to do it. Put it on that open swivel the same way you did, like that. So now the next step is you're gonna grab your pliers and you're gonna pinch down that open swivel to where it's closed. If you look closely, you got a little bit of a gap. I'm gonna close it a little more. Try to close it as much as you can. All right, there you guys. Took it off camera just to close it a little more. Typically, that's about good enough. Look how close it is. There's not that open gap. The next step is you're gonna grab your crazy glue, super glue, anything that's really strong. So you see how we close it there? We're gonna grab some super glue, crazy glue, whatever, and we're gonna put it one drop right there on one side, and we're gonna do the same thing as the other side. Put one drop on the side of it. And now you're gonna just let it sit there and it's gonna dry itself. Now, sometimes the super glue will drip down to your hook and weight. No worries, over time, just move it around. That's it, that's your jeeker rig. Simple, effective jeeker rig. Now, that's how you do it with the components. You need some pliers and some super glue, and bam, you have it done. Just give it about 30 seconds to a minute to really get a good dry, and then you're set. You can adjust it to a bigger hook, a smaller hook, whatever you're using. I like the one odd, like I said, it's very versatile for whatever I'm throwing, and the weight, five grams is really perfect for me, but if I want something lighter, let's say, look, I'm fishing a lake or a pond or a river, any scenario where you're fishing a body of water and there's a large amount of weeds, there's a thick amount of vegetation on the bottom and you want to get down to those bass, so maybe you want to go with a 3.5 gram weight and maybe with a 2 watt, 3 watt hook to have maybe a creature bait or a crawdad above the weeds. You don't want to go always stuck in the weeds and not even get your lure into the strike zone. You're going to want to go with a bigger hook, lighter weight to go above the weeds and to be able to be in that strike zone to catch a bass. Now that's the great side of this rig. You can sit there and design it whatever way you're looking for. Let's say if you're fishing around rocks and you got a little bit of current like the river. I find the 316 very hard to get hung up, especially with this rig in general. It's very hard to get hung up in the rivers, but if I do, you know, you can adjust it to, like I said, a 3.5 gram weight, and that will allow you to fish and drag it off the bottom without having the issue of being hung up, like uh, throwing a tube. I do fish the tubes too in the river, and the issue with tubes is I get hung up pretty easily. Now with the Jika rig, I do get hung up, not as bad as I do with tubes or any other kind of bottom contact bait. So this is a really bright side of using the Jika. It's kind of hard to get hung up with this rig. So that's really it guys. That's how you make it, that official components. Now, for those of us that aren't fortunate enough to be living by a bait shop that carries this stuff, I'm gonna show you another method on how to make this Jika rig at home. First and foremost, you're gonna need a EWG hook, something you prefer. I think this is probably a size one or one not. You know, use whatever hook you feel comfortable with. So you just need a hook. You need a swivel. Get a really strong durable swivel that's gonna not break off because this is where you're gonna tie your line and this is where, where you set the hook. You're gonna feel, you don't want it to break on you when you set the hook. It's kind of like a jig. So you want something that's gonna be trustworthy. So get yourself a nice swivel like this. Get a nice split ring, something that's really strong, durable. A little split ring. And here, get a little stick drop shot weight. That's really all you need to make it at home. 
split ring swivel load drop shot weight this is a 316 pounds another five gram and of course an ewg so first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna grab split ring open it up with your split ring pliers just like so now it's opened up now we're gonna grab swivel and we're gonna connect it to our split ring slide that on there we go now that's done, we're going to connect our weight. You want to get your weight first. Use a little stick weight that you would use for drop shot or any kind of weight similar to the style. You just want it to be like a stick because you're not fishing this rig directly off the bottom. Just slightly above. Slide it. Sometimes what I like to do too, grab my split ring pliers and you know where you slide your line on for a drop shot? You're going to expand it with the split ring pliers to give it more room. You're slowly bending it, but you're gonna just wanna give yourself enough space to where the split ring can move up freely like that. Now you see how it's moving freely? That's done. The next step is you're gonna slide on your hook to the split ring. Why that? I have the hook into that split ring. Boom. And there you have it. That's your very own Jika rig without the fancy components. So now where you tie your eye is gonna be at the other end of that swivel. The most important thing I can say when you're building your own just like this, I suggest using a very strong split ring and a very strong swivel because that's really what's holding on to that fish. But you also gotta make sure you have a very strong hook. So like I said, Yamagatsu's are extremely durable go-to hooks other than the decoys that I, I would go to because on how trustworthy and durable they are and the strength they are. So this you're guaranteed that you're not gonna really break off. This is your cheap way to do it. This is your cheap method. This is, you can do this right now at home because I guarantee every bass fisherman has a drop shot weight, a swivel, a split ring, and a EWG. This is a fancier way, there. This one's less bulky than the one on the bottom, but either way, they're gonna both work the same way in the water, guys. So now, I do own a smaller version of this. Actually, let me show you a smaller version. The one on, I believe that's a one on as well. And this is about, I believe a size two or three. I'm not too sure, but just look at the size difference compared to the other ones. This one's a bit smaller. So now, how do you rig this? You might be asking, it's basic, it's your Texas rig, but for anybody that doesn't know or who are getting into bass fishing, all you gotta do is throw it on like you would like a Texas rig. So you go in through the head of the plastic come out that thread it on turn it around just like so and then poke it through right here it's not the prettiest looking but you get it you get the idea that's basically it there's that and then this is with a craw. We're using the one we made. Thread it on. Just go in a little bit and come out of the plastic like that. Slide it on, turn it around. And then figure out where it's gonna go in through the plastic like so. Pop it out through that. There you have it, guys. That's a Jika rig. That's how you make it. That's how you rig it. Now I'm going to show you underwater footage, and I'm going to talk about how I like to fish this in different scenarios with different plastics and show you the versatility of this rig. All right, guys. So now we're with the underwater footage, and the first thing that we have in the tank is a little three-inch craw. Now, as you guys can see, this craw doesn't really have any crazy flappers to it. It's really basic. It has those little antennas that get a little bit of action, but nothing too crazy. So first way I like to retrieve this craw is I like to hop it off the bottom. Little hops, making it look like a little crawfish that's kind of trying to flee away from a bass or from a predator. And it gets pretty good action. Sometimes I like to sit there, hop it, pause it and let it stand up directly and when it stands up in that direct position it kind of looks like a crawl in a defensive position trying to flee away from a predator 
you know from those bass another way i like to fish a crawl too is i actually like to drag it off the bottom just slowly dragging it and the great thing about dragging it too it gives you as an angler a better idea of what you're fishing what's the bottom contour like so that could be fishing sand rocks weeds mud it gets you a better understanding of what the bottom contour is like so you can get an idea what kind of plastic i should throw one great method to use a rig for but as you guys can see right here, I'm just dragging this crawfish. So it looks like a crayfish that's in distress, that it's struggling to live. So for the bass, they might view this as, oh, easy meal for me to get. That doesn't require a lot of effort, you know? So sometimes these bass are a little bit lazy. They're a little bit finicky and they just want something that doesn't get that much action. That looks easy for enough for them to go by and sweep it up in easy meal for the day. Another thing that I like to do too, guys, is I actually like to basically cast this craw there and i like to pitch it or flip it in one area and just twitch it just slowly twitch it get those antennas to wiggle a little bit in the water get those crawls to wiggle a little bit in the water that's really what i like to do sometimes and i believe i did that in my last video casting it out in one area and just twitching it keeping it still in that one area just twitching it try to get those antennas and crawls to wiggle in the water as much as i can because sometimes that's what a bass wants it you wiggle it enough to whatever the bass is liking or you give it the right action you're gonna get that bass to strike this is what the bass is seeing whenever i'm fishing this rigging out in the water this is what the bass is seeing in the water so you know try these different methods for this crawl or a crawl similar to this to get that bass to really get fired up and hit that bait the next plastic i like to use on the jico rig is called basically a creature style bait you know anything with those big crazy flappers i call them beaver style baits or you can call them creature baits whatever you guys like but you guys can see i like doing big hops with this because you see those crawls and you get the legs they get those great flapping action in the water and sometimes that's just enough to drive that bass insane and react and bite that bait but uh i like big hops and i like to pause my big hops to get that bait to stand up vertically kind of imitates a crayfish in that defensive position when it's spilling away from a bass and doesn't want to get eaten sometimes that's enough to drive the bass insane to want to hit that it's a pretty big meal so if you imitate that you know just right to where it looks like a big crawl that's trying to flee away those bass would be fired up and wanting to react and bite that it's an easy meal for them another thing i like to do with this creature bait is i like to give it a hop let it sit in place and just wiggle my rod you know shake that rod tip as much as you can to get those crawls to wiggle a lot in the water sometimes that wiggle can be enough to drive those bass to wanting to hit that bait so cast it out there it's like flipping and pitching keep it in that one area and twitch it and if nothing happens then give it the big hops back to your kayak shore or even on the boat and sometimes you can get a bass to hit it when you least expect it all right guys another plastic you can throw on the jico rig is a grub tail or anything with a curly tail on the back of it you know a double grub tail it if it gets that crazy action like this guy does the little single grub tail what i like to do is i hop it i like to give it nice big hops i used to use this in the fox river for some smallmouth and it worked great at one point for me giving it those nice hops and that tail to really swim in that water another thing you can do with the grub tail is basically you can drag this or sort of swim it as it has that little tail dragging it off the bottom you can get that tail to really kick in the water get a really good swimming action that's sometimes what the bass want you Know, this is what the bass are gonna see in the water and sometimes we got to figure out what the hell do these bass want what's gonna drive them insane and wanting to hit our bait so don't forget you guys can sit there and try to swim it drag it and you get that tail to swim with a grub tail on it so the next plastic that I threw on the Jika rig is something that I actually experimented with last year and it had insane action throwing a little robo worm or even a little trick worm on this Jika rig was it was the action was insane as you guys can see I, I drag it in there I like to twitch it in one area or I like to hop it off of the bottom like a crawl. Give it those nice hops and sometimes that you'll get that tail of the worm to stand up directly and it looks like an easy meal for the bass to eat. It could represent a worm, it could represent a leech in the water, whatever color you guys want. So there's that. As you guys can see right here, I'm just hopping it, giving it those nice graceful hops and sometimes dead sticking it a little bit. Dead sticking it in an area. Try to get that tail to wiggle as much as possible. You know, those bass will like that. I, I was messing around with that during the summer this past year and it worked great in this new area. I've never fished before. You can see sometimes even dead sticking it and giving it a little twitch. You can see that bluegill I have in my tank, how he reacts and he tries to eat the tail of the worm and just wiggling it. 
that's sticking it so there's one way and that's the that's the first plastic in the tank that this uh, little green sunfish or bluegill react to it you know he was actually interested in the robo worm versus the crawl versus the grub tail versus the creature bait so uh, wiggle that tail it has so much action and the way it glides in the water it's pretty much what i'm looking for and that's why i like to throw it on the jika rig now another bait you can throw on it that i kind of really didn't focus on throwing that much this year is basically a kite tech you can throw an easy shiner you can throw the i think it's called the swing impact any one you can throw and the way you can fish this and how i kind of mess around with it is swimming it as you guys can see you get that paddle tail to kick in the water that's one way to fish it another way is to hop it off the bottom as you guys can see so now if those bass are in spawning mode you know they're on their beds and they're protecting the eggs throw a white kite tech on the jika rig and hop it give it those big hops to get that tail to really swim in the water and it basically looks like a little bait fish that's feeding on the egg so if you can find that little sweet spot on that bed where that um, bass is spawning and you wiggle it on enough to make it look like the little bait fish that's eating their eggs that bass is going to react and get it off the bed so one thing i'm going to advise you guys is you might want to make a smaller jika rig or you might want to use a smaller kitek. I think a two inch or maybe even a three inch might be perfect for this. A four inch might be pushing it. But if you're fishing, let's say post spawn, when those bass are done, they're ready to eat. That four inch kitek looks like an easy meal for that bass to eat. You know, sometimes downsizing too in pressured bodies of water could be the biggest impact on your fishing. It could be a wonderful day, but who knows? Those bass either want big bait, small bait. We don't know. That's the best thing about bass fishing. You gotta figure out those bass, but that's that's how you can fish a Kai Tech on the Jika rig. Hopping it, giving it those big hops so we can get that tail to really kick in the water, or dragging it where you get that tail to basically swim in the water. All right, guys, so we're coming to the end of this video. You guys, I showed you the Jika rig. Now I'm going to show you my setup that I like to use for the Jika rig. And it's going to be my bait caster setup. And then I will explain to you guys. I won't show you guys, but I'm going to explain to you guys my spinning rod that I like to use for the Jika rig as well. All right, guys, so for my bait caster setup, I like to use my Shimano Casita in a 7.2 to 1 gear ratio i am using 12 pound test seager in visex and i'm using an abu garcia fantasita premier rod and this is a 6 foot 10 inch rod medium light and i'm just zooming up on the reel showing you guys what the reel looks like this is a custom shimano casitas i did have my buddy ac slayer aka ben put in some real parts in for me and i put in a shallow spool to cast light lures like 5 grams and 3.5 grams those are really the two grams that I like to use on a Jika rig, but I've been stuck on the five grams. If I am fishing the river, I'll drop down to 3.5. As you guys can see, it shows on that real 7.21 gear ratio. It's a 150 HD from Shimano. For my spinning reels, I use medium light rod. I like to use 10 pound braid. And for my medium rod, I like to use 16 pound braid, but I've been really stuck on using my bait caster because it has that little shallow spool allowing me to cast light lure. Now, if you don't have shallow spool, you can use a, a reel with an sv spool or if you have a reel that can handle such light lures then use that i've been really stuck on using the bait caster a lot it just gets the job done for me so now we're coming to the end of this video guys and i just want to say i hope you find this educational i hope you find this video very interesting for you guys to watch and learn and hopefully become a better angler and i hope you guys use this rig in the future so if you guys do end up using this rig and if you catch a nice bass on it what i'm doing on instagram is i started the hashtag kid jika because my friend gave me the nickname Kid Jika because he knows I listen to Kid Cuddy and he knows I'm young and I fish the Jika rig all the time. He knows that so he gave me the nickname Kid Jika. So now if you're on Instagram or on Facebook, if you guys do catch a bass from using this new rig that I showed you in this new technique, DM it to me and I'll feature you guys on my Instagram page and also put in hashtag Kid Jika. That's me. I'm Kid Jika aka Angel Art Fishing aka Angel Rodriguez. So yeah guys smash the like button and let me know that these are really interesting videos these are videos you guys want to see in the future so i can start incorporating this videos into the future of the channel and you know give you more tips and tricks on stuff that i felt like i've mastered or stuff that i felt like works really good for me that could potentially make you a better angler because there's so much to learn in the world of bass fishing it's hard to figure out what the hell these bass are going to eat because every day the conditions of the water the lake it's everything's changing it's never the same so that's the world of bass fishing we got to figure out what the hell these bass are going to eat. Anyways guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys on the next video.